What's up, friends? Welcome back to the Well That's Good podcast. I have to tell y'all, I am actually kind of nervous for this podcast um, because I'm really just interviewing myself, which is so weird. I guess I'm not interviewing myself, I'm just talking, but I'm so used to interviewing someone else and the pressure's not on me, but this is all on me. And so I was kind of nervous last night thinking about this and I was like, Christian, go over with me what I, what I want to say, what points I want to get across, you know, um, because I Today I'm going to be talking about my postpartum journey and I really want this to be um, not only, you know, just me sharing my story, but I hope it's actually inspiring to you in your own journey, no matter if it's postpartum or just something else hard that you're walking through. Some of my advice that I put out from my own experience could hopefully help you uh, with whatever you're walking through, whether it's postpartum or whatever journey you're on in life that might just be a little difficult. Um... I've seen so many of you guys tagging me on Instagram saying that you can't wait for the postpartum podcast because you're currently going through that or you had a hard postpartum journey. And so um, I hope that my story gives justice to what, you know, we go through as women um, because everyone's different though. And that's what you really have to understand that just because mine might look a certain way doesn't mean yours is going to look that way. Or maybe ours seems so similar, but there's some differences and that's okay. But I think that the advantage advice that maybe I can give throughout the whole thing could help you no matter where you're at. And that's my prayer today that no matter where you are, no matter what journey you're on, no matter what it looks like, that God will meet you in the middle of it. Um, So without further ado, let's get to the story. So like I said back in the last week's podcast, whenever we told Honey's birth story, something kind of went wrong in uh, during her birth, during the labor, whenever she was about to come out, her head got stuck. Well, not her head, her shoulder got stuck right after her head came out and then her knee also got stuck. And so lots of crazy things happened and I kind of low key missed mentioned that I had to get stitched for hours. So you probably could tell this is about to be a rough postpartum journey because it didn't all go quite as planned and there was some trouble that happened, you know? Um, And so when I was at the hospital, I didn't even know how bad it was though. I didn't know how bad it was going to be because I was on pain medicine. I had amazing nurses who were taking care of me who were awesome. And so I didn't even know that like I was even really hurt. I didn't even really know know that you know I was about to enter this really big healing process to come and so I remember at first I was honestly on cloud nine like I just had my baby girl we saw so many miracles it was amazing I'm thinking like this actually went great and I don't know how I'm not that sore but I'm really not even that sore mind you didn't really realize that I had so much medication So much so that I called and scheduled Honey's like pediatrician appointment for like two days later. And then I had to call back the next day and say, I clearly was medicated when I did that because I am in so much pain. I cannot even move right now. So I was kind of had a false confidence in the hospital thinking I'm fine, thinking everything's great. Can't even believe this is another miracle that I'm not even hurting. Um, Well, you know, God is good, but that that one did not happen. I was definitely hurting. But I remember so many cool things things right in that moment. So first off, um, whenever you have your baby, if you don't know this, you don't lose all your weight right then, right there. Okay. And so, but I do remember as soon as I had her and everything comes out and the water fluid goes down, not as swollen anymore. I, y'all, I'm not even kidding. I felt so skinny. I thought I looked so good. I thought I looked great. I actually took a selfie in the mirror because I was like, look at my body. What? I have to document this. I look back at that now and I literally look seven months pregnant in the picture but in my mind I was killing it I was like I look great and so it's so funny I had this like super false but like awesome confidence in the moment and I remember I told Christian I was like look at how good I look like it was like all this in the hospital everything was good and then I remember we got in the car to go home and I was just talking about how happy I was and how being a mom has just given me such a new perspective on life. And I mean, y'all, I was on cloud nine. Uh, but two of the things that I said to Christian in the car that I that I still hold to that being a mom has changed my perspective in, but I don't think you have to wait to become a mom for your perspective to change on this. I think if I would have gotten this in life at any point in my life, my life would have been benefited and blessed because of it. But one thing that I realized is I realized that 
I actually can be so confident in my body, not because of the way that it looks, but because of what it's capable of doing. Um, I didn't care what my body looked like that day, even though I thought it looked awesome, even though I still looked seven months pregnant. I didn't care about that. I cared about the fact that my body was just able to grow a baby, a baby that literally went from a little poppy seed size to a nine pound, five ounce bundle of joy that I love and adore. I was so proud of my body for how powerful it was that it birthed that and it's recovering and I just was amazed. And so I felt so confident in my skin and I still do. Like even today, like I'm wearing a tank top, which actually is a big deal to wear on camera for me because I have these little bumps on my arms. I always have since I was little and I've kind of been insecure about it. But now I'm like, who cares? Like, my body's awesome. Like, not because of what it looks like, but because of what it's capable of doing. And so that's something I am really glad, um, you know, going through pregnancy and having a baby really taught me. Another thing that I told Christian that my perspective was new on is that I was actually confident in the decisions I was making for once. I didn't self-doubt. I didn't I didn't wonder what other people thought or what other people would have done differently. I was just like, I'm confident in what I'm going to do because, you know, I'm her mom. And I think, you know, there's been times in my life where I've made decisions and then I've second guessed them based off what other people have done or what other people will think or what if they don't think I'm smart? What if they don't think I'm wise? What if they don't think I'm doing the right thing? You know, should I have done that because everybody else is doing it? All of those things. But with Honey, it was like, making these decisions, whether it was, you know, to breastfeed or to bottle feed, to, you know, um, do vaccines to not, all these decisions that are a million different decisions when you become a mom, you have to decide. I was confident in the ones that I was making because I'm her mom and I love her the most and I'm going to do the best thing I know for her life, Um, which in turn made me confident in the decisions I was making for myself and confident in the decisions I was making for um. Christian and I as a couple, you know, even the what it came down to getting the epidural or not getting the epidural, I used to not want to because I wanted to be that strong person that did it because I wanted to experience the natural labor and I wanted to do all that. But in the moment when my doctor's saying it's going to be safest for y'all if you choose to do this, I did it. And it was safest because had I not done the epidural and we went through the trauma we went through, it would have been a lot harder. And so, you know, just a little decision like that I just became confident that I do hear the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit leads me and I need to be confident in hearing the voice of God more than I need to be confident in hearing the opinion of man and so that was something that really really um changed my life and becoming a mom and like I said I didn't need to become a mom to become confident in that Thankfully, God opened my eyes to those things when I did become a mom. But wherever you're at in life, you know, you can truly become confident in your body, not because of what you look like, but because of what it's capable of doing. And right now, you can actually become confident in the decisions you're making in life because you're listening to the Lord, because you're praying, because you because you're doing it out of love, because you're doing it out of peace, because you're doing it out of wisdom, and not because you're doing it out of wanting to do what everybody else does, or not wanting to be judged, or not wanting people to think you're stupid. And so I encourage you in those things. Summer has been awesome, especially because life is starting to go back to normal. Am I right? I just went to a movie the other night. That was awesome. We can go to restaurants and see people there. And we can also go to the post office. Yeah, no one's really excited about that. But I have some exciting news for you because life is back to normal. You don't actually have to go to the post office because stamps.com is there for you. You can skip all that and save on postage. Mail and ship. Anything, anytime, anywhere from your computer, send letters, ship packages, and pay less, actually a lot less, with discounted rates from USPS and UPS. Okay, listen to how cool this is. They make it so easy for small businesses. In fact, Live Original has done this, and so has Duck Commander, my dad's business, um, because they really just make it so easy, and it's kind of that thing as to why would you go to the post office when this is an option. You can print official US postage and shipping labels 24-7 without having to leave your desk or buy any fancy equipment all you need is your computer and a standard printer stamps.com is pretty much a no-brainer saving nearly 1 million small business owners like you time 
and money. They offer deals you can't get anywhere else, like up to 40% off USPS and up to 66% off UPS shipping rates. And with their switch and save feature, you can quickly compare carriers to find the best rates for you. So they pretty much have it all figured out for you. So stop wasting time, go into the post office and go to stamps.com. Instead, there's literally no risk. You can use my promo code WOA, that's W-H-O-A, and get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in WOA. That's stamps.com, promo code WOA. Stamps.com, never go to the post office again. Um, now let's get to the more hard part of the postpartum when I actually got to the house, okay? This is all in the car. I'm realizing all these epiphanies. I get home and the medicine wears off, all right? And I got behind them on the pain medicine. I didn't take heavy pain medication. I just took like a very high dose of ibuprofen. Um, but it was just crazy. It I was in more pain than I'd ever been in, honestly, in my whole life, um, for real. I remember getting home and all of a sudden being like, ooh, ooh, something, something, don't, something don't feel right. And uh, I remember just going through a little moment, actually having to go use the restroom. And for those moms who have done that, it's just really hard. And so I just laid on the couch and I just started crying so hard. My in-laws are there, my mom's there, Christian's there. And I could not stop crying. And Christian comes in. He's dealing with me. He's like, are you okay? I'm like, I have just never been in this much pain in my life. And I don't know what to do with it. I, I like, I don't know how to help myself. I don't know how to sit in it. I just, I just, all I can do is just cry. Um, and so I just cried. And um, then I stopped crying and I was still in pain, but it was okay. I was like, okay, we're just going to make it through this. This is how it's going to be for a little while. And honestly, it was like that for a little while. You know, I posted a picture going out because I brought my nurse's gifts a week later and people were ragging me. You shouldn't be out. You shouldn't be doing that. You must not have had a hard labor. You must not have torn. You must not have da 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 because you're out. I can't believe you dressed like that right after you had a baby and kind of like judging me for the decision I was making. Honestly, I was in a ton of pain that day. I definitely was hurting. I definitely tore. I definitely had a very hard labor. Um, but I, it was really important to me to give my nurses gifts because of how well they took care of me. And I had to go to the doctor anyways. And so I wanted to just give them gifts. And I dressed up because it made me feel better. Because for a week, I've been laying on the couch and crying and hurting and trying to adjust to being a mom when I can't really walk and all the things. And so that honestly was really good for my soul. And so I would encourage people, you know, when you are in a hard time, sometimes you just have to not, don't push yourself too hard. Don't go, 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 go. But if you can do something that makes you feel better for a little bit of time, like washing your hair or putting on makeup or going and doing something kind for someone, then do it. I mean, that honestly really, really, really helped me. It kind of lifted my spirit. Um, but I had to say, so like I said, I was in pain. I cried, all that stuff, cried from pain. I never cried from pain. So that was really weird. And that took a little bit of time and honestly more time than I would have liked. I think it was like two weeks before I kind of got, well, not even, I would say really more like a month before I stopped being in like really, really bad pain. Um, and I have to say, years ago, I was preaching at Passion, and I it was a message that went viral. A lot of you responded to it. And I said a quote. I said, time doesn't heal. Jesus heals. And I want to say that, that is true. That And that is especially true in the context of I was talking about at Passion when I was talking about relationships. Like, time isn't going to heal something like Jesus can heal something. Jesus actually can heal your heart. Time doesn't do that. However, whenever you're going through pain, sometimes time really is the only thing that can help heal your body. Time really is the only thing. You have to give yourself time because time is the thing that's actually going to help 
and it's going to help you heal. But Jesus can be your healing in the middle of the pain. And what I mean by that is even in the pain, Jesus can be your strength. Even in the pain, Jesus can be your joy. Even in the pain, Jesus can be your peace, your stability, your consistency, your love. So yes, you're still in pain. Maybe you're not physically healed, but Jesus is your healing for your heart in the midst of the pain. And time is going to help actually heal your body. And so when you're sitting in the middle of that and you know, like, I am in pain. I have a long way to go to recover. And I don't want to sit here and be miserable for the next few weeks, even though I know I'm going to be in pain. That's when you invite Jesus in and say, Lord, I am in so much pain. I don't even know what to do with my body. I have never experienced the emotions I'm experiencing right now. They are so high and they are so low. I am so excited to be a mom and I am in the worst pain I've ever been in in my life. God, I need you to be my strength. I need you to be my joy. I need you to be my consistency. And it's in that moment that yes, time is required for healing but Jesus can meet you in that and do extraordinary extraordinary things so I encourage you with that um I also in postpartum was really dealing with fear and I know a lot of people express that they dealt with um, postpartum anxiety or postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety was more what I was dealing with so um what it kind of looked like for me and honestly I had I've struggled with anxiety for years and even wrote a book called Live Fearless because of my journey with anxiety. I have a tattoo that says fearless. I'm constantly trying to fight fear in my life. But whenever I had her and I was going through that postpartum, it was like so many emotions happening that I couldn't really fight the fear like I normally do. And so all of a sudden, I was just like in a state of anxiety. I didn't even realize that it was creeping up as much as it was. Um, So because Honey and I had the labor that we experienced, um, uh, my mind kept going into like the what if this would have happened? Like what if, what if it did last one more minute and she didn't make it? What if, what if her, you know, what if she didn't, you know, actually end up coming out? Like couldn't her, they had to push her back in and neither one of us made it. What if I lost too much blood? What if when they did push on my stomach, they actually severely damaged something internally? I don't even know I'm bleeding, you know? What if, honey, you know, actually the oxygen did get cut off for too long and she has brain damage? Like all these like well, what ifs. And then it led me into like, is she really okay? Like, did she really make it through that? Did I really make it through that? Is there something wrong with me? Is there something wrong with her? What if, you know, all the things. And that is such a toxic brain spiral to go through that it has to, like, it will manifest itself in some way. And for me, that was extreme anxiety. And so I didn't even realize that those thoughts throughout the day were making me, like, jittery, were making me have all the feelings of anxiety were making my chest feel super tight and like I couldn't breathe but I didn't tell anybody I was going through that and the reason and I didn't even tell Christian I told my mom I didn't tell anybody and the reason I didn't is because I was so happy that I was her mom I was so joyful I was so blown away by the miracles and I like didn't understand how I could be so happy and so joyful but also experience so much fear and I realized that you don't have to have, you don't have to just choose one of those feelings. You don't have to just choose fear and trade out all the joy. You don't have to just choose joy and trade out all the fear. They actually kind of go hand in hand. The reason why I was so fearful is because I loved her so much. You know, the reason that I, you know, even cared if something happened is because I, I loved it her so much and I was so happy to get to be her mom however just because it makes rational sense that I had some fear doesn't mean that that's something I needed to live with or I needed to soak on Helix Sleep really is so great, especially if you're looking for a mattress specific to your needs and how you like to sleep. It's so easy. You can go online, you can take a two-minute quiz, and it basically matches you to your 
perfect preference for whatever sleep that you like to get. Helix knows that everyone is different, so they have lots of options. They have soft, medium, firm mattresses, mattresses that are great from cooling you down, or even if you wanna get a little bit more warm at night. Mattresses that are great for spinal alignment and can prevent morning aches and pains, and even a Helix Plus mattress for plus size sleepers. So they really have it all to meet your needs. You can actually even take the quiz with your husband or your wife, and they'll match you with a mattress that's a perfect compromise for both of your sleep preferences, which is great because Christian and I are very different how we like to sleep. He gets so hot at night and I get so cold. And so we actually got matched with the Helix Midnight Mattress because I wanted something that wasn't too firm, but also not too soft. They like a nice medium comfort. Um, and so that was really nice for me. I also am a side sleeper, so I got to put all that in and that's the one that we got matched with, which was so great for us. So if you're looking for a mattress, just go take the quiz. You can order the mattress that is matched to you and the mattress comes right to your door, shipped for free. You don't even have to go to a mattress store, which is so great. Helix is also awesome because you don't even have to just take my word for it. It is actually awarded number one best overall mattress of 2020 in Wire Magazine. Helix has been recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as a go-to solution to improve sleep. Also, this is pretty awesome. They have a 10-year warranty and you can actually try it out for 100 nights risk-free. So just go to helixsleep.com slash Sadie, take their two-minute quiz, and they'll match you with the customized mattress best for your sleep life. Helix is also offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash Sadie. That's helixsleep.com com slash Sadie for up to $200 off and two free pillows. I remember one night I was, um, not, I didn't want anybody to know that I was anxious or that I was thinking this is before I told anybody. And, um, I kind of felt like I was about to cry. So I went in the closet cause my in-laws were still there. My mom was there, honey, Christian were all out there. We were watching a movie and I just told them I had to go to the bathroom when I went and I just started crying in my closet and Christian came in and he was like, what are you doing? I was like, and I just, just said, I'm so scared. I just said, I'm so scared. And he said, why? And I said, I'm just so scared. Like, I'm so scared something's going to happen to her. And I'm sorry, I'm emotional, but it's like, so it was so real. I was like, I'm so scared something's going to happen to her. I'm so scared. She's not really okay. So scared. What if, what if whenever she got stuck, you know, the oxygen actually cut off too long. I'm scared that something happened to me and I'm not going to get to be the mom that I want to be to her and all of these things. And, um, that fear, you know, was really stealing from the sweetness of the moment at that time that, you know, those first two weeks of the, of the miracle that I had. And it really made me think about miracles in a different way, because like I said in the last podcast, to experience a miracle, it comes out of a moment of desperation. It comes out of a strong need. You know, there were times in the Bible where it wasn't that big of a need that they needed a miracle. You know, they needed wine at a wedding. Okay, easy. Get the wine, you know. Um, they needed food. So easy, get the food. But then there were other times where it was like, I need my mom to be healed. I need my daughter to live and Jesus would heal them. And then there was that time that the woman bled for literally 12 years, right? And she comes um, to Jesus in the crowd and she doesn't even want to be seen by Jesus. And she reaches out and she touches Jesus' garment, hoping for a miracle, desperate for a miracle. She shouldn't even have been in the crowd that day because she was a diseased woman. She was looked at as a disease, an outcast, but she pushed her way in the crowd that day, hoping for a miracle. She touched his garment and this woman who bled for 12 years, it says that instantly she was healed. Well, I started to think about that and I started to think about how we always read that story in the Bible and it's such a quick story. It's just like our podcast last week. It's just a quick story. Wow, it's a miracle. That's amazing. She experienced a miracle. It's so cool. But like we didn't read her 12-year journal. Like we don't know actually like what pain she went through when she felt that like an outcast and like she had this disease and the physical pain on her body that was reminding her of the emotional pain that she was going through. And then we don't know after Jesus healed her, which he said, go in peace. So he led her in peace. But we don't know if, you know, there were moments and days where she thought back to the 12 years of isolation where that really weighed on her, right? But she had to choose every day to actually 
respond to the miracle that Jesus did in her life. She had to choose to say, actually, I am no longer who I used to be, an outcast, a diseased woman. I am a daughter, as Jesus said, and I can live in peace. And so I came to this moment with my story where I was like, I can live in fear, yeah, and I can sit here and say what if and what could have and what should have happened, but or I could live like a miracle happened and say it actually didn't happen and I don't know why and I can't explain why I'm okay and why she's okay but we are and I just need to have gratitude and thank God and that gratitude that I had in my heart the gratitude whenever I was afraid just saying thank you God for her thank you that you did heal her it just began to shift the fear in my life um and I also decided because I knew the state I was in that I was going to call someone who's helped me a lot in my life. His name is Dr. Amen. He used to work with me with anxiety and I knew he could help me with postpartum anxiety. And so I called him and um, he gave me just the best advice. Some of the things I actually just share with you to stop with the what ifs, to stop with the what could have and what should have happened and to actually just say that didn't happen. And to exchange that fear or even not even exchange it, but just override that fear with gratitude. Because as a mom or in life, you're going to have things that make you afraid. Like there are going to be things that make you have a fearful thought or start to feel anxious. But it's important that you don't just let that thought just run rampant, but that you actually exchange that with a different thought of gratitude. So he helped me through all that. And actually, he's going to be on the podcast next week because I wanted his advice to get to be shared with all of you because that was such a pivotal moment in my story that was so pivotal and also just letting people in sharing that with Christian that night and what was crazy is I didn't even know he was experiencing fear and he opened up to me and he said actually me too he was like it's been hard for me like watching you be in pain has been hard he said when you you know were in labor it was so hard seeing that moment was so scary and hearing the monitors drop and all the different things and you're you were losing blood and she was not doing well and he said I was so scared and so getting to like hear from Christian like we both needed to open up about it and we just didn't want to because we didn't want to seem like we were ungrateful but actually it, it wasn't that at all it, it actually wasn't that at all it was that we were so grateful but we didn't know what to do with these huge emotions and so one thing I would encourage you to do is no matter what you're experiencing like talk it out with somebody walk it out those thoughts are not meant to just live with you and you alone because when you walk it out and when you talk it out you can actually get as Dr. Amen told me through the pain not just sitting in the pain you got to get through it Um, another thing that really helped me is journaling actually I'm not a good journaler honestly I've never really been I'll start a journal never come back to it I'll look back and I'm like oh last entry 2018 great uh so a lot's happened since 2018 you know like I'm, I'm just so bad I've missed so many days um but I was like I need a place where I can just share all my emotions because You know, when somebody asks you about something or you share it on Instagram or even a podcast, whatever it is, like, you don't really go in like the full depth, right? I mean, they're like, you you tell it, but like, you don't tell it, right? Even when you're talking to somebody, like, you tell it, but like, you don't tell it. Like, you don't say like, and then I thought dot, dot, dot. And then I dot, dot, dot. You know, like those things that are really only meant to be for like you and your spouse or your best friend or your mom or somebody who really knows you and can walk through with it. But journaling helped me. I, I actually started the journal like this. I said, God... This is going to be a journal between me and you. It's all going to be a prayer, but it's not going to be formatted like a prayer. I'm not going to say, dear God, because even in that, sometimes I cheat the system. Even when I talk to God, sometimes I, you know, talk to him with rose colored glasses because I'm the type of person I always want it to all just be okay. I want it to seem okay. Not, I don't want to fake it. I just want it to be good, right? So even with God, I'm like, yeah, this happened, but I'm so happy because you did this. Instead of just being like, God, like this happened and it really hurt and I know you're good, but right now it just doesn't seem like it, you know? Like I just need to be real. And so the journal, I was like, God, this is going to be like all my thoughts like everything and I invite you into all of it invade my thoughts these are the thoughts that I don't want to have that I surrender to you God give me new thoughts right and so it was just such a good place to just get it all out 
and just honestly feel the Holy Spirit meet me in that because as I wrote, I could see what God was doing. I could see his hand in it. I could feel him becoming, you know, um, a part of this story. He was always a part of the story. I knew he was in the story. Obviously, you can't not hear our birth story and not see God in it, but I just needed a reminder that the same God who was in the labor and delivery room is the same God who is sitting with me two weeks later as I'm in pain and I'm afraid and I'm entering into the newest season in the craziest journey that I'm about to enter on. He's the same God here with me. The same God who protected Honey that day in the hospital is the same God protecting Honey while she sleeps at night. The same God who protected me in the hospital is the same God protecting and living inside of me tonight. And so, you know, I think it was such a good thing to remind myself that he didn't leave when we left the hospital. He's still there. Yeah, the hospital might have seen easier because we had nurses and because he was showing himself in such specific ways but he's still here when he's showing himself to be my peace you know to be my strength to be the thing that um helps me know that I can be a good mom to honey and a good wife to Christian and you know I just I just can't imagine I can't imagine living a day without knowing that he is there um And honestly, if I could give you any advice throughout all this, and I hope a lot of this has helped you and encouraged you with where you're at and spoken to you in the place, if I can give you any advice, it's just to know that he is near. Let it be as real as the bedrock beneath you. Um, Because the hardest thing I think in life is to feel alone, even when there's people around you, right? Because even though there are the people who love me the most around me, I felt alone because I felt like nobody could understand what I'm walking through, what I'm feeling, what I'm dealing with, even though they could if I explained it. Maybe. I just didn't feel that way. But what I do know is that God that's living inside of me 100% gets it. And he's with me in it. And not only is he just sitting there with me, but he's helping me through it. And so I encourage you to cling to the Father in those times. Um, that's really all I got. That's my story. That's what I've walked through for the past two months. And I will say, um, sitting here today, I'm about two months into being a mom. It is the greatest honor of my life. It is the greatest joy. It has not been easy by any means. It's hard, right? But what, like what? What would be even comparable to the greatest thing ever, the greatest responsibility, and not be hard, right? It's supposed to be. So it's been the most beautiful journey. I love being Honey James' mom. I love doing it with Christian. We are a team in it all, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. And I can't wait to see the times to come. Thankful for where we've been, but very excited for where we're going and what we've learned along the journey.